also what I found was that when I'm in a client's barn or house, they think I'm moving the rod. Yeah. So if I'm just holding the rod with the straw like this, they know I'm not really moving it. So it makes things easier. Okay, here's a nice um, chart <coughs> showing the chakra points on the dog. And again, like we've talked about earlier today, how the, um, the layers go out from the body. Um, this is produced by Tall Grass Institute. Um, I got mine from petmassage.com. If you're interested in getting, they have charts of acupressure points and the chakras and some other um, charts. So we're going to go ahead and check. Um, this is Sarah. She's my blind beagle, and she's a little older. She's probably about 11. She was a stray. So that's kind of why I carried her up because she's a little apprehensive being blind and stuff about what's going on. So. So we're going to check her chakras and balance anything that she needs done. Um, typically, what I do, no matter if I'm seeing horse, dog, cat, whatever, I will always check chakras before I work on an animal because that also gives me an idea of something that could be going on inside of an animal. So when I check chakras, I just start at the root chakra. And what I do is I just go in each, through each layer to see if there's a disturbance or not. And I usually just wait on my rod to balance out. Once I figure out where I am with each chakra, I'll just go on through, check each one, see where it's open, where my blockages are. So right here I would say she has a blockage at her sacral chakra. And I'll just make note of that continue checking the rest of her chakras and then I will go back and balance each one. And a lot of times what I find when I'm working with horses after I've done myofacial release with them, which is a little bit deeper type of massage, all the chakras are open. They, they seem to balance themselves as the restrictions are working out. So what I'm finding with Sarah is typically her blockage is in this area. I can either hang on to the rod and wait until that area clears back out and the rod shows that it's open, or sometimes what I'll do if I'm working with a horse or a dog is I'll just set the zeb down at their feet and I'll put my hands on the horse. I'm also trained in Reiki, so I'm sensitive to the chakras, and I'll just hold it over them until they feel like they're balanced and once I feel like everything is balanced I will take the zeb and go back and go through the layers to make sure everything is done. So you're thinking it's her third chakra? Between the second and third. Which is kind of interesting because um, Sarah has a problem with her pancreas. It doesn't create enough enzymes to digest her food properly. Beth didn't know that about Sarah. So um, she's on medication whenever she eats. She has to take an enzyme pill to help her um, digest her food. So that's really interesting you found that. So I guess what you could do with the ZEB too would be find a frequency that would help with digestion and program it. I was going to suggest you do a saliva sample. A saliva program. sample. Yeah. You want to do a spit? Sure. There's a spit stick. <laughs> <laughs> We call those spit sticks. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'll just check her out while I'll just check her out while you're working on it. I'll let you know what I find here. Okay, good. I will on occasion from time to time use a saliva sample and do the same thing to it that Cliff is doing to see what meridians off and typically what we'll find will coincide with the problems that the animal's having. And one in particular with the horses is stress and ulcers and the spleen runs opposite of the stomach meridian, so that horse may have problems stocking up at the same time. And we just use it for a number of things. I can't tell you how helpful it's it's been for people and animals. Can 
Can we pass your diagram around? Sure, absolutely. Just so you can see where each chakra is. Mm -hmm. Thanks. She had quite a bit of energy going on in these two chakras when I was going up through her, feeling it. And it did feel like it settled down, so I just go back up through now and see how well we did getting everything opened up. She's open and probably back to normal for a while, and that's something that, you know, Kathy or you folks can do with your animals that wanted to know more about. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd say that she's opened up, and that is, you know, something that you guys can do with your animals, um, dogs, cats, whatever, is just check them frequently to make sure that their energy is flowing well. Because when the energy is flowing well, they're going to be more healthy, less likely to have problems and other restrictions in their bodies. When, when you're using the divining rod, I'm still a little bit confused about what what shows that it's open. Particularly with me and my energy, what I have found is when the chakra is open, the rod points away from me. If there's a blockage, like when we were going up through her uh -huh. initially scanning, the rod was pointing either this direction or this direction. I typically say that this is closed for me personally. Uh -huh. And it varies from person to person. That's why you need to check and clear. Thank you. You're welcome. You want to know what I found? Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, she has a parasite in her bladder that uh, mite I was telling you about. She has the mites in her bladder. And she also has a, a, a condition that resonates with hepatitis B. And that's very common with that mite. That mite carries hepatitis B. And how would you clear it? Well, she's going to have to have a ZEP treatment. She put uh, on there uh, 400 and uh, 418. 418. On, and work over the bladder, over the uh, kit, the, uh, excuse me, the uh, liver area. And, and, um, and then you put uh, 682 and work over her bladder. You want to do the bladder first. You want to get rid of that mite first. And how long of a treatment? Are you talking until minutes it, it, or no, 10 minutes? No, until it's clear. I know, but that's what no, you don't. every day for six weeks? You have to do it uh, on a, uh, if, it's a, if it's a chronic condition, uh -huh. you know, you're going to have to do it on a daily basis for a while to clear it, until okay. you don't check for it anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if it just started, they never had trouble before. I would say uh, on the average of, uh, you're going to have to work with it at least 10, 15 minutes, uh, a couple times a day. Okay. Initially, and then, yeah. Now I'm confused how you read that when yeah. you swallowed. Oh, we're, we're going to get into that in just a little while. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get into that in just a little while. I just went through this with my dog, and what I found out is as the liver cleared, the bladder mites got worse. So I think it was like dumping. And so the bladder mites got better, and then as the liver cleared, the bladder mites got worse. So you might find the same thing. You think the bladder mites are gone, and then when the liver's clear, they're back again. Okay. And then it all kind yeah, you have to check back out. and forth, yeah. right? Back okay. and forth, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 